In this tutorial we will use WebRTC to control a robot. For example, we can control the robot to create a map. And then, we can do autonomous navigation based on the created map. It is also possible to establish video and voice communication using WebRTC. WebRTC could be very helpful in various robotics applications. So, what is WebRTC? WebRTC stands for Web Real-Time Communication. WebRTC provides software APIs written in JavaScript, which can be used to create peer-to-peer -peer communication between Internet web browsers and other applications. With WebRTC, data transfer is done without custom interfaces, extra plugins or special software for browser integration. WebRTC connects users by transferring data from device to device using peer-to-peer -peer communication. Signaling Server provides a mechanism to coordinate communication between peers and to send control messages. If users are on different IP networks that have network address translation firewalls that prevent real-time communication, WebRTC can be used in conjunction with session traversal utilities for NAT servers. This enables a given IP address to be translated into a public internet address so peer connections can be established. In case Sun server cannot be used to translate IP addresses, traversal using relays around that server is used. This server relays traffic between users, enabling them to connect. The interactive connectivity establishment protocol is used to find the best connection. In this tutorial we will use Raspberry Pi. As an operation system, we will use Ubuntu Desktop 2264-bit version. To write this image, in the Raspberry Pi imager push the Choose OS button, then select Other General Purpose OS. Select Ubuntu. And finally select Ubuntu Desktop 22042 LTS 64-bit. To operate the robot, we need user interface. Of course, we can create it from scratch, but in this tutorial, we will use an existing service. We will use RoboPortal. This page provides an application to do peer-to-peer -peer remote robotics control. We will get back to this application later, but for now, create an account. To use RoboPortal we will set up BotBox. BotBox is a client application for RoboPortal. Firstly, update the app and install required packages. Here is an explanation of some packages. libvpx is a free software video codec library from Google and the Alliance for Open Media. libsodium is a library for encryption, decryption, signatures, password hashing. libzmq3 is just a wrapper for the 0MQ library. Program which we will use is written with Go programming language so we have to install Go language. We will install it in a simpler way than described here. We will do it using Snap. Snaps are a secure and scalable way to embed applications on Linux devices. With Snaps, applications run fully isolated in their own sandbox, thus minimizing security risks. The classic confinement allows a snap to have the same level of access to the system as classic packages, like those managed by EPT. Now, a little bit about Go language. Go language is an open source, compiled language written to build concurrent and scalable software. The language was invented at Google. After installation completes, execute Go version command. 
we can see that we have installed Go language successfully. Now execute this line and clone the bot box repository. Move to the bot box directory and execute the go build command. We have an error. If this error occurs, it means that you don't have required package to build the source code. Install build essential. Build essential is a meta package. It is a link to several other packages that will be installed as dependencies. It includes GCC, G++, make and other packages required to compile programs. Now, let's build our program one more time. This time, we have successfully built it. Before executing the bot box program, we have to create a robot in Robo Portal. Go to the Robo Portal and open the list of available robots page. We already have a robot which we will use, but I will show you an example of how to create a new robot. Firstly, click on the Create New Robot button. Enter the new robot's name into the text box. We will call our robot Web Robot. In the widgets window, we can select what data we want to receive or send to a robot. In this tutorial we will only operate the robot, so leave it as it is. Click on the Save button. Here, click the Setup Controls button. In the Control Setup window, click on Forward. Press up key on your keyboard. Enter action name into the key text box. Then click the assign control button. Repeat this operation four times for each robot move. After setup of the controls, go back to the robot list page. We can see that our robot has been created successfully. To access our robot, we need to know public key and secret key. Access to this page from your robot and copy these keys. Before executing BotBox, we have to create an end file. All configuration of BotBox is stored in the end file. We can use end example file as a starting point. Here, we replace public key and secret key with those we have created. In these lines, set your web camera configuration. As an output mode, we will use IPC. IPC stands for Interprocess Communication. IPC is a mechanism provided by an operation system for processes to share data among them. Usually, applications can use IPC categorized as clients and servers, where client requests data and server responds to client requests. We will use this feature later. These are all modifications we have to do. Now connect your camera to Raspberry Pi. Now we are going to execute our program. Open a new terminal and move to the bot box directory. Execute bot box. Now move to the computer from which you will operate the robot. Open the robo portal page. Make sure that status of your robot is connected. Click on your robot. Click the start button. We can see that the image from the web camera connected to the robot has been successfully received in the client side. Now let's see the code to operate a robot. In this tutorial, as an example, I used four-wheel steering robot which I made previously. But any robot can be used with nearly the same code.
This program consists of two threads. In the first thread, operation mode of the robot is decided based on the received data from the client. In the second thread, based on the operation mode, servo moving angle or velocity is decided and sent to servos. Async IO run is used to run a coroutine in an event loop. A coroutine is a function or routine that can be suspended and resumed. This function creates an event loop, runs the coroutine in the event loop, and finally closes the event loop when the coroutine is complete. The async IO wait function runs an iterable of awaitable objects and blocks until a specified condition. Receive function is defined with prefix async. The async def expression defines a coroutine. Here, communication with the client is established. In this line, the data from the client is received. Note, that by using a wait statement, the current coroutine is suspended until data is received. In these lines, the received data is converted to dictionary format and a value associated with controls key is extracted. Here, robot operation mode is decided. In the robot control function, if the robot is not moving and a new command is received, we set new servo values according to the operation mode. After the robot moves for a certain amount of time, we initialize the robot state. Now let's operate the robot. Open two new terminals. In the first terminal, run the bot box. In the second terminal, run WebRTC script PI script. On the second computer, Open Robo Portal and move to the Robot Control page. Turn on Controls Enabled Switch. Now you can operate the robot by clicking on arrows or by using your keyboard. 